Hello my friends and welcome. Let's go straight to Avdivka. The situation update here, if we speak about the ground, is not in favor of Ukraine because Russia took some of the ground on the south. However, at the same time, they have tremendous losses. Still unable to take any kind of the villages under their control. So let's go to the timeline. It was yesterday and it is today. The light advancement of the Russian forces. However, they took the part of this road. Also, if you check out the satellite light image you may find one more artificial hill over there. Let's check out the 3D map. So this is the Avdivka town and here Russia was successful. Here we don't have this latest update, still it is colored in blue, but here is this hill. The elevation is not that significant, so it will not provide Russians with surveillance over Avdivka town. However, it could give them some opportunities to spot the ground uh, around, so the terrain is mostly flat in this area as you can see. We also have the confirmation of the Russian advancement from the different sources. So here they took this ground. Just remember around three months ago Ukraine started the attack towards the Donetsk airfield. I reported about it. So now unfortunately Ukraine stopped that attack concentrated mostly on defense and Russia, as you see, is taking the ground because basically Ukraine doesn't want to lose the forces in the trench fight. Still Russians would have to cover all of that area to get to Avdivka and all of those fields are covered with mines. We may conclude that the offensive operation the Russian Blitzkrieg with major forces and artillery backup just failed. Today there was just one small attack performed by the Russian forces and they were stopped and finally finished by Ukrainian drones. Again you can see the turret separation. Also the Russian T-90 Pro Reef tank was targeted by the FPV drone. It was caputed and burned down. The majority of those videos I publish on my Telegram channel. It is available in the video description just below. I also keep my audience updated with the current news around Ukraine and not only on Telegram. So Russia definitely uses much less forces in Avdivka. Right now they are accumulating the forces it doesn't mean that they stop the offensive to get Avdivka. But here we can see one of the first days of the Russian advancement to Avdivka. Lots of the infantry, lots of the reinforcements. Some say that Russia already lost 4,000 soldiers during this failed attack attempt. Well, not sure about 4,000, but based on the images that I have seen, thousand for sure. And just numerous of the vehicles, the losses surpass everything we witnessed this year. The drone battalion of Magyar also sends the video of the FPV drone operation. You may see that it was very precise. So Ukraine uses the FPV drones more compared to the Russian side. However, Russia obtains resources to produce their own FPV drones. Mostly the spare parts are coming from China. Let's go back to the front lines. This time we have good news coming from Andrei. Ukraine got more ground over there pushing Russians out. We are speaking about the 11th separate assault brigade of the Russian army which was forced to retreat. We have the information about it from the different source. Generally speaking the Bakhmut direction is not the strategic one for Ukraine because there is the vast territory which is controlled by the Russian army. There is no chance for now that Ukraine would be able to penetrate those defense lines and go to liberate this territory. For Ukraine, the main attack operation could be conducted where it is conducted right now, basically in Arikhiv direction in an attempt to get Melitopol under control and also across the Dnieper River in Kherson Oblast. By the way, we have the update on this territory. The deep state military map covered everything in the gray color. So it was yesterday, it is today. Ukraine performs numerous of the attacks across the Dnieper. Plus there was a new information spread in internet that Ukraine went to Krynki across the Dnieper River. It is hard to say whether this information is correct or not. Now we don't have really the proofs about it. Just a single video was recorded by our Marines and some analysis say that it was done in Krynki. So here here we have the assumed area of the Ukrainian new landing operation and here is uh, the photo of the destroyed something, the house that is somewhere over there. Probably it was done by Ukrainian artillery. There is also some information from the Russian publics that Ukraine crossed the Dnieper River in this area, but it's hard to trust their channels. 
Some of the Russian military bloggers who speak with actual Russian soldiers say that Russia has losses in Krynke and all across the Dnieper River shore. The Ukrainian artillery works perfectly against the Russian positions. They also say that they caused the losses for Ukraine, which could be true because they continue to use the aviation gliding bombs. Nevertheless, the situation for Russia, as they say, there is very critical. The information about what is actually happening is not coming to the high military command, they say. Russia is holding just thanks to their local military commanders in that area, who are calling about the future disaster for the Russian army. Nevertheless, they received not a lot of the supplies, because I think Russia started their attack near to Avdivka. They think that that is their main goal for autumn campaign. But you know what might happen if the landing operation in Kyrenki is confirmed? I already told you, maybe a couple of times, that Ukraine will advance from this place and from Krynki, cutting the Russian army probably over here or probably even here. I expect it to be like that, otherwise I don't see the sense of the landing operation across the Dnieper river if our guys just keep the ground over there. More good news for Ukraine, our armed forces were able to advance between Marinka and Novomikhailovka before Ukraine actually lost some of the ground on the south part from Novomikhailovka. But today we see the advancement, however, Russia opened the fire on our positions. You can see their artillery fire on this scheme. Some interesting events are happening inside the Russian Federation. Today I will not speak about Israel or Gaza, but the events in Russia, which were partially true triggered by the war between Israel and Hamas. So here you can see the Russian airplane, well actually it's American-made airplane Boeing 77, but it flies for the Russian Pabeda Airlines. It is the Mahachkala International Airfield, the main one in Dagestan, which is the Republic of Russia. And you may see lots of the people are running somewhere and lots of the stones, by the way, on the apron. So what actually happened there? There was the regular commercial flight from Tel Aviv to Mahachkala, Russia. By the way, Israel didn't cancel the flights to Russia. I think it should have cancelled it to avoid the situation which happened today. So someone posted the information in the local publics of Dagestan that Jews are flying to Mahachkala. It was enough to spark the huge fire and many locals went to the airfield. On the way, they started to block the traffic, searching for the Jews. Later on, they went to the airport blocking the terminal building. They opened also the door to the apron and went all across to it. Then they start to run around the airplanes searching for the airplane which came from Israel. They even searched the Jews in the engines. And they attempted to break into this airplane which actually came from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. The airplane from Israel that we see on the flight radar 24 which successfully landed with some delay in Mahachkala airfield belongs to the Red Wings Airlines. We have even the registration 89141 and you may find this airplane on the apron in Mahachkala. Basically it is staying behind the Pabeda aircraft so this is the registration you may see 41 at the end. It means that it is this particular airplane but there are no any stairs so those people are unable to get inside the plane because it's too high. So what they do they just run around the airfield throwing some stones and that's it. After a while police came to the place and they start to to restrict or arrest the people who went to the apron, but there were lots of the people. So they put down some on the floor. By the way, here is the Red Wings airplane, the registration. This came from Israel. You may see no lights and I wonder whether the people are inside or they were successfully evacuated from the place. By the way, if the airplane is coming from Israel, it doesn't mean that inside there are Jews. Those could be Dagestan people, Russian people who went to Israel, for example, for the medical treatment, because the medical support in Russia really sucks. So definitely we see the brainwashed people. Uh, by the way, there are a couple of the spies. This guy is wearing the USA hoodie and this one as well. There was also some shooting reported on the apron 
Russia landed their helicopter there with police. Also, they start to deploy the military forces in Mahachkala. And those are the Russian people who came to Mahachkala, to Russia from Dubai. So welcome home. They were forced to go back to the airplane because there was the crowd running on them. I'm 100% sure that if you close the door on Boeing 737, this crowd will never find out how to open it. Basically, you need to have some knowledge to open it. The basic one, but the crowd is usually without any knowledge. But the angry crowd and the rational thinking are two different things. Here we have some trolling from the other airplane. So this is Babada. So I believe that this picture was taken from the Red Wings airplane and definitely there could be some of the Israeli citizens or double citizens, Russians and Israeli. So probably they were staying there with lights off. The local Dagestan public say that all of the shops around were robbed and looted by the crowd usual. As I'm recording this video, the situation is now more or less under control. There were some clashes between the angry crowd and police. Some of the policemen were wounded. One life loss of policemen was reported, however, without any kind of the confirmation. The Russian Wikipedia says that there were Ukrainian Jews on board of that airplane. Ukrainian Jews. Hmm. Even President of Ukraine Zelensky made its statement. He says that it is the result of the Russian propaganda. Basically, the Russian propaganda spread the hatred against the Western countries, Jews, Ukraine, whatever. They don't really care. We may say that the Russian propaganda highly supports the Hamas movement after their attack on Israel. The leaders of Hamas organization even went to Moscow for official meeting with Russian representatives. It was their first voyage since the beginning of the war between Israel and Hamas. So now we see the result. I am totally agree with President Zelensky. It also creates the interesting effect inside the Russian Federation. Because we may see how Russia is being divided. I would say that such a big country as Russia with that national division with lots of the ethnic groups and lots of the religion confessions is unable to maintain its current borders under this huge propaganda. So for sure in the future we'll see the disintegration of the Russian Federation, it will be formatted into many of the different states. It will happen, but it will not happen tomorrow. The crowd even catch one guy. They say he looks like a Jew, but uh, this guy is from Uzbekistan. He works as the doctor in a local hospital. After a while, crowd released him, thankfully. So this event in its nature is not really good, but it opens the eye on a real picture in Russia. Russia looks stable under ruling of the Tsar Putin, but definitely in the future it will be a huge chaos inside the country. During the daytime the angry crowd just burned this construction at the Israeli center that was in the building process in Dagestan. At the same time Russia performs the special military operation to denazify Ukraine. So who really needs the denazification? All right, let's go back to Ukraine because we have the air sirens. Russia launched some of the missiles and the drones on Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. At the same time, Ukraine continued to send the commercial ships from the Odessa ports full of grains. Awesome. So Russia left the grain deal, but Ukraine and allies doesn't really here ships are still going. It is possible because our guys kicked Russians out from the Snake Island and took control over the oil and gas platforms in the Black Sea. Ukraine responded to the Russian attacks by hitting the oil refinery center in Komi Republic of Russia. Locals reported the drone attack, the noise from the engines and the collision. At the same time, Russia is going to use the new version of the Lancet drone. Those could be more effective and more precise. They say that all of the tests were completed. Unfortunately, Ukraine doesn't have the similar type of the weaponry produced massively in Ukraine. However, we are working on that. My friends, please don't forget to press the like to this video. And also, if you want to support my job, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and also the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, you are awesome. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.